reading from the book of Sirach. If you choose, you can keep the commandments. They will save you. If you trust in God, you too shall live. He has set before you fire and water. To whichever you choose, stretch forth your hand. Before man are life and death, good and evil. Whichever he chooses shall be given him. Immense is the wisdom of the Lord. He is mighty in power and all-seeing. The eyes of God are on those who fear him. He understands every man's deed. No one does he command to act unjustly, and no one does he give license to sin. The word of the Lord. Growing up in Minnesota in the country meant several things. One, it meant we took care of our garbage by burning it outside in a burn barrel. Now this is actually one of the chores that my parents gave me, commands, that I actually enjoyed doing as a kid, playing with fire outside. Um, I love to watch the fire consume the garbage from this big stack of garbage into nothing but ash. I guess I just like to play with fire, but maybe I have some more existential reasoning for it now. But, um, but this wasn't true, this enjoyment of all the other tasks my parents gave me to follow. And I'd constantly say to them, is it really a sin if I, follow, if I don't obey you, if I don't do what you tell me, if I don't follow your commands, if I don't honor you? Is it really a sin? Well, we see from the first reading from Sirach today that if you choose, you can keep the commandments and they will save you. Now, this, of course, is from the perspective of the Old Covenant, right? That the law and following it was Israel's way of experiencing union with God, his covenant. Now, I suppose it's true that it could lead to an improper focus on exteriors and a mechanical view of the law, but this way of experiencing the old law was not the way that it was meant to be, the way it was founded on love of God, love of neighbor, which, of course, is how the old law participates in the eternal law. Now, as Sirach says today, immense is the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God that exists within the eternal law. Immense so indeed that it became flesh, this wisdom of the eternal law. Became flesh to set us free from the burden of sin and the law. Of course, as we know, it, it did, he did not become flesh to abolish the law, but, as he says, to fulfill it. Now, as we know then, the law is still meant to be followed as Christians, insofar as the law is part of the natural law, which is how we experience the eternal law. And as the wisdom of the eternal law become flesh says, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. And so the wisdom of the eternal law who became flesh, we see, gives us a new law, a law of love. And in following this law of love, we experience the new covenant that he set in his love and our destiny, ultimately, as human beings. And as Dominicans, of course, we know that this new law is experienced internally, and one way, of course, is through grace and virtue. And as our Lord says, our virtue must exceed that of whom? Well, the Pharisees, who were living out the old law purely externally. And so... We can understand this as to keep the law, then, without love, is like having a body without a soul. We live, then, in this law of love within the spirit of the law, 
right? No longer to the letter of the law. I know in my own life, there's been times, and in lives of others I've encountered, that, we, that we've had this mechanical view of following the law. And this juridical, legalistic view that, am I doing this? Is it a sin? Is it not a sin? And then mechanically going to confession. In, instead, I and others have missed the whole point of experiencing love, mercy. As a wise Dominican once said, in our sinfulness, we need to embrace in this life of love our brokenness and give it back to the Father in this life of love. For literally then, to keep the law externally is not enough. To be a disciple of Christ, the foundation of our lives must go deeper to a mutual love, a life and law of love, the new law, that St. Thomas says in this supernatural life, charity or love is the foundation and nature and goal in, of this life. Literally then, to keep the law of God and of the church is not necessarily the same as being a good disciple of Jesus and his church. It reminds me of the story in Harry Potter when Dumbledore and his, and his sister, especially Ariana. And Ariana is one of the, as we see in a flashback in the seventh book, halfway through about, that she's really one of the most tragic figures in the whole Harry Potter series. Her life is one of immeasurable hurt. And her need was that of most people who are in pain and in hurt. She needed love. Actually, she needed sacrificial love. And Dumbledore, as we see in the flashback in the seventh book, failed her. He was incapable of fulfilling his duties to care for her while, because he was pursuing his own selfish ambitions, the three deadly hollows, right? And his failure, which ultimately leads to his sister's death, helped Dumbledore to realize and to comprehend the truths of love. So much so, in fact, we see in the book that he puts on the epitaph of her tombstone the, one of the basic rules of love. Where your treasure lies, there so your heart will be also. And then we see later on that Dumbledore redeems himself by his sacrificial love and life for Harry through his death. I'm sorry if I ruined that for you, but if you don't know that by <laughs> now, wow. Um, now, I don't know if all these actual graces within Dumbledore's life led him to faith in Jesus Christ and perfect contrition if he made a good sacramental confession before he died. That's not clear. But what is clear within that example is that it seems to me it's a perfect example of what it says in our reading today from Sir Sirach. That the eyes of God are on those who fear him. Fear. And what does it mean to fear God? But really to be so in love with God that we fear failing him as we would with anyone we truly love. And so may we come to an understanding and an experience of this true fear of the Lord that it may lead to a life of love within the new law of love and that it may consume everything we do, think, and say just as fire does the garbage on a Minnesota prairie.